Good morning, good morning, Keisha Johnson here. Welcome to Waking Early for His Glory. You can find me here every Monday through Friday at 4.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you so much for catching the replay. If you can be so kind and type in hashtag replay so I will know that you are watching. Great morning, Carmen. And if you are tuning in for the very first time, please type a number one in the comments so we will know that you are watching and give me just a moment to get this shared over to to uh, my ministry page. As you all are tuning in, please go ahead and begin to share out the broadcast after you have shared. Go ahead and type in hashtag shared. I missed you all yesterday. I'm so excited to see you today. Um, go ahead and type in the comments. God did it again. It is a great day to be alive. I am so thankful and so grateful that God has allowed us to see another day. Um, let me go ahead and uh, share this over there. Good morning, everybody. If Facebook will let me. Great morning. So good to see you all. Go ahead and type in the comments. My hands are blessed. I think I left my oil in my closet. Um, when I came, I didn't bring it up here with me. That's all right. My hands are blessed. These oily hands. Everything that I touch is blessed. Everything that I touch prospers. Everything that I touch multiplies. Everything I touch turns to gold. Amen. These blessed hands will lay hands on the sick. They will be healed and they will recover in Jesus name. And let everybody say amen. So good to see you all. So good. All right. Let me uh, just take a moment so I can get this shared over to um, here we go. Okay. Awesome. I think we are good to go. Hold on just a moment. Uh, good morning. All right. Good morning, everybody. So good to see you all. So let me go ahead and say this. If you were at the retreat, was that not an experience? If you missed it, you missed it. If you missed it, you missed it. And I'm so sorry for all of you all that could not get in. But I did want to say this. I did not forget, for those of you that attended, I did not forget to send you the take-home sheet. Sorry, got to do this a little announcement. I did not forget to send you the take-home sheet. I just realized that if I email you all, I email all of you and all of you don't need the sheet, you know, because there were some that didn't even register um, for whatever reason that just, you know, and I don't want to feel like I'm sending junk email to anyone sending you something you didn't ask for so what I'm going to have to do if you were at the retreat and you want the take-home sheet because you you want the take-home sheet reply to your confirmation email I need you to go to your email in the email that you were sent from me with the link to log in just reply to that email and I will send it to you. I said, oh my, there was no way for me to really see who was actually on um, the Zoom for the retreat. And there was just no way for me to do that. And so I had to wait until I spoke to you all. So please just reply to your confirmation email and I will make sure that you get it. And so the thing is, it had it been like an in-person event that would have been like your take home sheet on your table for you to take home. But since you couldn't have it on your table to take home, I have to email it. Yes, y'all type in the comments and just share. Oh, God showed up big time. Let me tell you, God did it. It was all him. Um, let me tell you. But I'll do another live about that um, another day. Uh, and we'll kind of, I got to tell you all some things and just kind of talk, to, just share some things um, that God kind of spoke to me. Things that God showed me just regarding the whole thing from beginning to and I wanted to make sure that you all had an amazing experience. And I said, I am going to do this thing. I am going to serve and work this thing as if y'all paid to get in. <laughs> as if it was a paid event. I just wanted to serve you all and to give my best in everything that I do. I want to do with excellence. And I feel like... I can say that I've done that. I feel like I can say that you all had a beautiful 
experience. I can say um, that those of you that were there, you know, had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ himself, whether it was through the teaching, whether it was through the workout, whether it was through just sitting and listening to the worship. Um, so I will host another one really soon for those of you that could not get in. Um, but God knew, listen, he gave me 100 and I kept hearing 100, but little did I know there was a cap at 100. I didn't know, but he knew. And I thank God he didn't let me know because then I would have been panicking. How is everyone going to get in? There was no stress, no pressure. It was just such a beautiful time and God is good. That's all I can say. So, um, I'll definitely host another one for you all that could not get in. And I promise you, you do not want to miss these gatherings. You do not want to miss these retreats. You just don't want to miss it. All right, so enough of that. Uh, done in excellence. Thank you. Thank you. And that's with everything I, because, you know, I said, I could have been like, I'm home. We're doing this from home. It's free. Let me just show up looking like I took time, making sure I got my grays out of my hair for you all. <laughs> even put on I, if I pull out the red lipstick y'all know I even pulled out the lipstick for y'all <laughs> right right in my house right so it was great it was awesome y'all are amazing y'all are awesome so all right let's go ahead and jump in and get started if you're new we are so glad you're here uh, listen and I'm talking about the red lipstick that takes all day to come off <laughs> I'm talking about the the good red lipstick and when i pull that out listen all right so um um uh, what am i saying we are reading through the one year bible if you are here for the first time we are so glad you are here <coughs> um all right let's go ahead and go into worship so don't forget um, someone type this in the comments, reply to your confirmation email, reply to your confirmation email, and I will send you the link to download the document. And if you were there, go ahead and say, mmm. And if you were there, you know exactly what that means. Mmm. <laughs> Y'all type, mmm, in the comments, right? Mmm. Such a powerful time. Yeah, the red lips. Listen, I said, oh, Lord, I'm going to pull out the good red lipstick for y'all. <laughs> uh, <I> <laughs> oh, Viola, it's okay. Let me tell y'all. I am going to do another one. I'm going to host another one. So let's go ahead and um, go into our time of worship. That's right. Mm. And listen, even the workout experience. Have y'all ever had an experience like that? It was just amazing. Let me tell you, when you let God into it, listen. Mm. That's right. Mm. Listen, don't give it away. Don't give it away because there were some that didn't experience it yet, but they will be at the next one. Y'all type mm, in the comments. <laughs> Have y'all been practicing? Uh, okay. Oh, I was cute. Thank you. I had to get cute just for y'all. It was so fun. I said, let me turn the camera off until they all come in. And when I turn the camera on, how y'all doing? Because <laughs> y'all always see me looking like this in the mornings, right? So, uh okay just having fun it's all right it wasn't about me and how i looked in my red lipstick it was really for y'all but it was just fun it was so fun <laughs> it was so fun i was so glad to be with y'all it was so fun so we got to do it again um my thought was let's do one every month and the lord was like no 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 slow down slow down slow down little lady slow down so I'm thinking uh, quarterly, we will have um, a virtual retreat, a way to come together, see each other. Um, but if y'all register, you better get there quick, right? Because we were at capacity at 9.36. Um, it went from 12 to 100, like in a matter of seconds. It, it, I was just like, whoa, that happened so fast. But, um, all right, so Father, we thank you, we honor you, we bless you, Father, we thank you for another opportunity to come together, just to fellowship and to worship and spend time in your word. We thank you for allowing us to see another day, Father, we thank you for protecting us through the night from things that we have no idea that you've protected us from. We say thank you. You did it again. It's a great day to be alive, and we are so thankful and so grateful. 
human and so I am going to we're gonna go ahead into a time of worship um, oh sorry hold the line hold on one second here let me get this done hold on um, we're gonna go into a time of worship <clears throat> and before we head into the word um, and as we are in worship go ahead and begin to type in the comments at least one thing that you are thankful for or begin to um, share your prayer requests in the comments um, and then we will go ahead here we go all right we are ready <laughs> good morning good morning everybody it was funny because I was showering, combing my hair, and looking for matching clothes. I know my husband thought it was funny too. Like you're doing all that with your hair, lipstick, and what? What are you doing? Aren't you just in the bedroom? <laughs> Aren't you just gonna be hiding out in the bedroom for three hours? I'm like, yeah, but these are my people. This is our family. <laughs> all right, so let's head into worship. Angelus Rosa. Go ahead and begin to fill the comments with your worship this morning. Just love on the Lord. Just tell him that you're thankful and you just appreciate him today. Done. She is healed from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. We can never outrun his love. Hallelujah. So Father, we thank you. Anybody thankful for mercy on today? We thank you, Father, for not treating us and giving us as we deserve. Because if you did, we wouldn't even be able to stand. We thank you. Hallelujah. Never out of reach. 
so thankful for his mercy on today. to be thankful for and what we focus on we magnify so it doesn't matter what situation you're in right now just begin to thank the Lord think about his goodness think about how good he's been mm. you've been so good and we thank you has been so, so good. Hallelujah. Such a good, good father and we thank you. Father, we thank you. We thank you for being such a good, good father. We lift up every prayer request to you on this morning. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for just being good. We thank you. I pray that your will is done in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Ah, you all, what a great way to start the day. So good. Oh, so good. So if you're new to the broadcast, we just want to say thank you. I would like to begin with just a time of worship, just to prepare our hearts and minds for the word. So we are about to listen and read through the one-year Bible together. If you do not have a one-year Bible, it is okay. Um, after the broadcast, I will share the link in the comments um, where you will be able to um, download and print the one year Bible um, and the Bible promises. So we're almost near the end of February. I uh, have not started on it, but I will go ahead and start working on um, the writing plan for um, for next month. Just another short, quick uh, reminder or announcement. Um, if you are not in the We Write the Word One Year Bible community, you will want to join us in there because in there is where I share the scripture verse of the day for meditation as well as the prayer points from the Bible reading for the day. Um, and our We Write the Word um, writing plan will always align, well as long as the Lord says so, will now align with the One Year Bible reading plan. So you'll be able to just write through the word, read the word, or do both. Um, and all of that is in the community group. And we had quite a few ladies, a few hundred ladies um, join us over the past uh, several months. So I'm excited about those of you um, that are new here with us. And I am trying to, oh, try, I'm like, what am I doing? Let me get the one year Bible pulled up on my phone. Mr. Tom Dooley <laughs> will be reading and narrating and doing the commentary for us this morning. <laughs> so while I'm doing that, make sure you all grab your water, um, you know, grab your vitamins, grab all your stuff, grab your journals and everything that you need. 
and I will get this pulled up the 23rd already. Can y'all believe it? <sighs> Make sure I got all my stuff. Um, all right, so we are ready. And y'all know what to do. If the volume is okay, type a number two in the comments for me, please. February 23rd. Our reading in the Old Testament today will be from the book of Leviticus. Thank you, Chapter Deshaun. 14, verses 1 through 57. How was the volume? This ceremony that we'll be reading about here is a ceremony of restoration. And it is for the healed leper. And it pictures our Lord's work of redemption in our lives today. Jesus went outside the camp to meet us and to die for us. He identified himself with the outcasts. Whatever is infected with leprosy is fit for the fire. But he rescues us. Birds don't belong in clay jars. Birds belong flying. They ought to be flying in the heavens. This is a picture of our Lord's incarnation. When he took upon himself a human body that he might die for our sins. Their turning the living bird loose pictured his resurrection from the dead. The former leper was treated like a priest. God has made us, you and I, we're almost through Leviticus, y'all. Through the blood of Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. What a Savior. And with that, let's begin our reading today here in the Old Testament. Oh, don't forget to share this. February 23rd. Leviticus chapter 14, verses 1 through 57. And the Lord said to Moses, The following instructions must be followed by those seeking purification Thank from you. a contagious skin disease. Those who have been healed must be brought to the priest, who will examine them at a place outside the camp. If the priest finds that someone has been healed of the skin disease, he will perform a purification ceremony using two wild birds of a kind permitted for food, along with some cedar wood, a scarlet cloth, and a hyssop branch. The priest will order one of the birds to be slaughtered over a clay pot that is filled with fresh spring water. He will then dip the living bird along with the cedar wood, the scarlet cloth, and the hyssop branch into the blood of the slaughtered bird. The priest will also sprinkle the dead bird's blood seven times over the person being purified, and the priest will pronounce that person to be ceremonially clean. At the end of the ceremony, the priest will set the living bird free so it can fly away into the open fields. The people being purified must complete the cleansing ceremony by washing their clothes, shaving off all their hair, and bathing themselves in water. Then they will be ceremonially clean and may return to live inside the camp. However, they must still remain outside their tents for seven days. On the seventh day, they must again shave off all their hair, including the hair of the beard and eyebrows, and wash their clothes and bathe themselves in water. Then they will be pronounced ceremonially clean. On the next day, the eighth day, each person cured of the skin disease must bring two male lambs and one female year old lamb with no physical defects, along with five quarts of choice flour mixed with olive oil and three fifths of a pint of olive oil. Then the officiating priest will present that person for cleansing along with the offerings before the Lord at the entrance of the tabernacle. The priest will take one of the lambs and the olive oil and offer them as a guilt offering by lifting them up before the Lord. He will then slaughter the lamb there in the sacred area at the place where sin offerings and burnt offerings are slaughtered. As with the sin offering, the guilt offering will be given to the priest. It is a most holy offering. The priest will then take some of the blood from the guilt offering and put it on the tip of the healed person's right ear, on the thumb of the right hand, and on the big toe of the right foot. Say, thank then the God priest for will Jesus. pour some of the olive oil into the palm of his own left hand. He will dip his right finger into the oil and sprinkle it seven times before the Lord. The priest will then put some of the oil remaining in his left hand on the tip of the healed person's right ear, on the thumb of the right hand, and on the big toe of the right foot, in addition to the blood of the guilt offering. 
The oil remaining in the priest's hand will then be poured over the healed person's head. In this way, the priest will make atonement before the Lord for the person being cleansed. Mm -hmm. Then the priest must offer the sin offering and again perform the atonement ceremony for the person cured of the skin disease. After that, the priest will slaughter the whole burnt offering and offer it on the altar along with the grain offering. In this way, the priest will make atonement for the person being cleansed, and the healed person will be ceremonially clean. But anyone who cannot afford two lambs must bring one male lamb for a guilt offering, along with two quarts of choice flour mixed with olive oil as a grain offering, and three-fifths of a pint of olive oil. Amen. The guilt offering will be presented by lifting it up, thus making atonement for the person being cleansed. The person being cleansed must also bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons, whichever the person can afford. One of the pair must be used for a sin offering and the other for a whole burnt offering. On the eighth day, the person being cleansed must bring the offerings to the priest for the cleansing ceremony to be performed in the Lord's presence at the tabernacle entrance. The priest will take the lamb for the guilt offering along with the olive oil and lift them up before the Lord as an offering to him. Then the priest will slaughter the lamb for the guilt offering and put some of its blood on the tip of the person's right ear, on the thumb of the right hand, and on the big toe of the right foot. The priest will also pour some of the olive oil into the palm of his own left hand. He will dip his right finger into the oil and sprinkle some of it seven times before the Lord. The priest will then put some of the olive oil from his hand on the lobe of the person's right ear, on the thumb of the right hand, and on the big toe of the right foot, in addition to the blood of the guilt offering. The oil that is still in the priest's hand will then be poured over the person's head. In this way, the priest will make atonement for the person being cleansed. Then the priest will offer the two turtle doves or the two young pigeons, whichever the person was able to afford. One of them is for a sin offering and the other for a whole burnt offering to be presented along with the grain offering. In this way, the priest will make atonement before the Lord for the person being cleansed. These are the instructions for cleansing those who have recovered from a contagious skin disease, but who cannot afford to bring the sacrifices normally required for the ceremony of cleansing. Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, when you arrive in Canaan, the land I'm giving you as an inheritance, I may contaminate some of your houses with an infectious mildew. The owner of such a house must then go to the priest and say, it looks like my house has some kind of disease. Before the priest examines the house, he must have the house emptied so everything inside will not be pronounced unclean. Then the priest will go in and inspect the house. If he finds bright green or reddish streaks on the walls of the house, and the contamination appears to go deeper than the wall's surface, he will leave the house and lock it up for seven days. On the seventh day, the priest must return for another inspection. If the mildew on the walls of the house has spread, the priest must order that the stones from those areas be removed. The contaminated material will then be thrown into an area outside the town designated as ceremonially unclean. Next, the inside walls of the entire house must be scraped thoroughly and the scrapings dumped in the unclean place outside the town. Other stones will be brought in to replace the ones that were removed, and the walls will be replastered. But if the mildew reappears after all these things have been done, the priest must return and inspect the house again. If he sees that the affected areas have spread, the walls are clearly contaminated with the infectious mildew, and the house is defiled. It must be torn down and all of its stones, timbers, and plaster must be carried out of town to the place designated as ceremonially unclean. Anyone who enters the house while it is closed will be considered ceremonially unclean until evening. All who sleep or eat in the house must wash their clothing. But if the priest returns for his inspection 
and finds that the affected areas have not reappeared after the fresh plastering. Then he will pronounce the house clean because the infectious mildew is clearly gone. To purify the house, the priest will need two birds, <laughs> some cedar wood, a scarlet cloth, and a hyssop branch. He will slaughter one of the birds over a clay pot that is filled with fresh spring water. Then he will dip the cedar wood, the hyssop branch, the scarlet cloth, and the living bird into the blood of the slaughtered bird and he will sprinkle the house seven times. After he has purified the house in this way, he will release the living bird in the open fields outside the town. In this way, the priest will make atonement for the house, and it will be ceremonially cleaned. These are the instructions for dealing with the various kinds of contagious skin disease and infectious mildew, whether in clothing, in a house, in a swollen area of skin, in a skin rash, or in a shiny patch of skin. These instructions must be followed when dealing with any contagious skin disease or infectious mildew to determine when something is ceremonially clean or unclean. Amen. Good morning. Please share the broadcast if you just tuned in. <laughs> and now as we turn our attention to the reading of the New Testament, our narrative today will come from the book of Mark, chapter 6, Verses 30 through 56. The servant cannot rest. God's servants become weary as they work mm -hmm. and must care for the body. Amen. But when you have a compassionate heart, you will not have an idle hand. Our Lord interrupted his vacation to meet the needs of the people. He need not interrupt anything today because caring for us is his constant ministry. The servant cannot pray. After such a demanding time of ministry, Jesus had to go apart to pray. But once again, he was interrupted, this time by the plight of his disciples in the midst of the sea. And it was the disciples who were amazed. Jesus intercedes for you and Amen. knows your situation. Say thank you, he will Jesus. come to you, care for you, and lead you into his peace. And with that, let's begin our reading today here in the New Testament. February 23rd, Mark chapter 6, verses 30 through 56. The apostles returned to Jesus from their ministry tour and told him all they had done and what they had taught. Then Jesus said, let's get away from the crowds for a while and rest. There were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his apostles didn't even have time to eat. They left by boat for a quieter yes, spot. Stephanie. But many people saw them leaving, and people from many towns ran ahead along the shore and met them as they landed. A vast crowd was there as he stepped from the boat, and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he taught them many things. Late in the afternoon, his disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and it is getting late. Send the crowds away, so they can go to the nearby farms and villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus said, You feed them. With what? they asked. It would take a small fortune to buy food for all this crowd. So they How much food do you have? he asked. Go and find out. They came back and reported, We have five loaves of bread and two fish. Then Jesus told the crowd to sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat in groups of fifty or a hundred. Jesus took the five loaves and two fish, looked up toward heaven, and asked God's blessing on the food. Breaking the loaves into pieces, he kept giving the bread and fish to the disciples to give to the people. They all ate as much as they wanted. And they picked up 12 baskets of leftover bread and fish. 5,000 men had eaten from those five loaves. Immediately after this, Jesus made his disciples get back into the boat and head out across the lake to Bethsaida while he sent the people home. Afterward, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. During the night, 
the disciples were in their boat out in the middle of the lake, and Jesus was alone mm -hmm. on land. He saw that they were in serious trouble, rowing hard and struggling against the wind and waves. About three o'clock in the morning, he came to them walking on the water. He started to go past them. Amen. But when they saw him walking on the water, they screamed in terror, thinking he was a ghost. They were all terrified when they saw him. But Jesus spoke to them at once. It's all right, he said. I am here. Don't be afraid. Then he climbed into the boat, and the wind stopped. They were astonished at what they saw. They still didn't understand the significance of the miracle of the multiplied loaves, for their hearts were hard, and they did not believe. Hmm. When they arrived at Gennesaret on the other side of the lake, they anchored the boat and climbed out. The people standing there recognized him at once, and they ran throughout the whole area and began carrying sick people to him on mats. Wherever he went, in villages and cities, and out on the farms, they laid the sick in the market plazas and streets. The sick begged him to let them at least touch the fringe of his robe, and all who touched it were healed. Mm. It's like the Psalm 40, I am healed. verses 1 <laughs> through 10. I am healed. We'll read here about waiting. While experiencing trials mm. at the hands of his enemies, David asked God for help, but the answer did not come immediately. Kind of like when you and I pray, right? The answer comes, but sometimes, a lot of times, not immediately. Well, he waited, and then God worked. Make room for God, and make room for God's timing. Mm. And what Say, a change I will took make place. Room for God. David went from a mm, pit so to a highway, from miry clay to a rock, and from crying to singing and in this passage of scripture Psalm 40 will read about witnessing when God does a great thing for you share it with others God's works and thoughts ought to be a part of your daily conversation mm -hmm. share the good news by what you say and do God can use your witness to bring others to himself Psalm chapter 40 verses 1 through 10 for the choir director, the Psalm of David. I waited patiently for the Lord to help me, and he turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on solid ground and steadied me as I walked along. He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see what he has done and be astounded. They will put their trust in the Lord. Oh, the joys of those who trust the Lord, who have no confidence in the proud or in those who worship idols. Oh, Lord, my God, you've done many miracles for us. Your plans for us are too numerous to list. If I try to recite all your wonderful deeds, I would never come to the end of them. You take no delight in sacrifices or offerings. Now that you have made me listen, I finally understand. You don't require burnt offerings or sin offerings. Then I said, look, I have come, and this has been written about me in your scroll. I take joy in doing your will, my God, for your law is written on my heart. I have told all your people about your justice. I have not been afraid to speak out, as you, O oh Lord, well know. I have not kept this good news hidden in my heart. I have talked about your faithfulness and saving power. I have told everyone in the great assembly of your unfailing love and faithfulness. Amen. Proverbs chapter 10, verses 11 and 12. The words of the godly lead to life. Evil people cover up their harmful intentions. Hatred stirs up quarrels, but love covers all offenses. Amen. 
So, Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. We thank you for your word that leads us. We thank you for your word that guides us. And we thank you for your word that protects us. In Jesus' name, amen. So, listen, speaking of that and our words, have your words changed since the retreat on Saturday? If you were there, once again, say, mmm, and type in the comments, I'm a life speaker. Oh, so good. So anyway, um, I'm going to share. I have a few things to share, um, but it, it didn't really go with today's reading. So I don't have a scripture reference from today's reading, but um, definitely something that the Lord wanted me to share. I'm not sure who it's for, um, but I'm going to go ahead and share it. And um, let me just say this. You are going from hopeless to hopeful, hopeless to hopeful. I don't know who that is for. Yes, I'm a live speaker, but someone needed to be reminded today that you are going from hopeless to hopeful. And I'm assuming that this is because there is someone on this broadcast now, live now, or someone that will be catching the replay that will feel like the situation that they are in or whatever it is that they are facing, they are completely hopeless. Then I'm here to tell you that the devil is a liar on today. So I am going to remind you of some of God's promises and hopefully um, that will bring your hope up, you know. So we have an enemy that wants to rob us of our hope. We have an enemy that has robbed some of you of your hope. And so that's why I'm so thankful for God's promises um, to remind us. All right, so let me just go ahead and um, I've printed this out because I wanted to make sure I shared all of it. Um, it shouldn't take too long, um, but I wanna go through this. Again, if that is you, even if it is not you, just say it for somebody that it's for. Say, I am going from hopeless to hopeful. I am going from hopeless to hopeful. I am going from hopeless to hopeful. The devil is a liar, right? There is hope and his name is Jesus. That is capital H-O-P, hope. All right, so number one, Hope in God, and you may be asking why. why. Why should I hope in God? My situation looks very hopeless right now. So why are you showing up this morning to tell me that I need to hope in God? Number one, hope in God because he has good plans for you. He has good plans for you. And Jeremiah 29, 11 is a great scripture reference for that. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Put your hope in God because God has good plans for you. He has specific, wonderful plans for you. It doesn't matter what your situation looks like right now. Right, what we focus on, we magnify. Somebody say, eyes up. All right, he has a wonderful plan for each of you. Um, put your hope in God because you'll see his goodness. You'll see his goodness. Scripture reference for that is Psalm 27, 13 through 14. I printed these out, but I don't know if I will read all of them, but I will at least give you all of the scripture references. Hope in God because you'll see his goodness. And Psalm 27, 13 through 14 says, I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Wait for the Lord. Say, I am going from hopeless to hopeful. All right. And God promises all of his believers goodness in this life. It doesn't matter what your situation looks like. Why, Keisha, why should I put my hope in God? You want to put your hope in God because of his abundant goodness, because of his abundant, abundant goodness. Says who? Says the word. Psalm 31, 19 says, Oh, how abundant is your goodness, which you have stored up for those who fear you and work for those who take refuge in you in the sight of the children of mankind. I need you to say, I will take refuge in the Lord. Why should I put my hope in God? You want to put your hope in God because he will fulfill his purpose for you. Somebody type in the comments, won't he do it? Yes, he will. He will fulfill his purpose for you. And a scripture reference for that, 
I'm sorry I get excited and start talking fast. I'm just excited to remind somebody this morning, somebody needed to hear this. I want to make sure y'all are getting all the scripture references. Psalm 138, 8. Psalm 138, 8 says, The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me your st and you. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Why should I put my hope in the Lord? My situation right now looks extremely hopeless, Keisha. I feel like all hope is lost. I cannot see the light at the end of the tunnel. I have been in this situation for way too long, and each day goes by, I just feel more and more hopeless. I'm here to remind you today, you are going from hopeful to hopeless to hopeful. You want to put your hope in, in God because he will complete what he started. He will complete what he started. God finishes what he starts. He finishes everything that he starts. And with that, that's a great reminder right there because we serve a God who is a finisher, who finishes everything that he starts. That means that you can too. Your days of starting and stopping and not finishing, that cycle of incompletion is over today in Jesus' name. That was for somebody. So you want to hope in God because he will complete what he started. Philippians 1, 6 says, I am sure of this. I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. So this, I just needed to say, the cycle of incompletion ends today. That's just a little rabbit trail. The cycle of incompletion ends today in Jesus' name. All right, why should I put my hope in God? You want to put your hope in God because he will establish your plans. Type in the comments, I have gone from hopeless to hopeful. Philipp, uh, not Philippians, Proverbs 16, 3 says, commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. But the um, translation, I can't remember which one it is. It says, commit your work to the Lord or commit everything you do to the Lord and your plans will succeed. So this right here is um, my my verse really for um, the ladies that, the, for my faith and fitness camp my faith in business camp as well as the faith and wellness community because we know because if we put you know our plans whatever it is whether it's business wellness journey trying to lose weight eat better whatever it is if you put you know if you commit that to the lord your plans will succeed it will be established so write that down proverbs 16 3 proverbs 16 3 all right and we can hope in him because he is the one that will bring those plans to pass. We can make all the plans to do all the things, but if we don't commit those plans to him, you know, so he is the one who will bring all those plans to pass. Next, why should I put, is this helping somebody? Is this helping anybody this morning? Is this helping anybody? I hope it is. Um, you want to put your hope in God because he will lead you. He will lead you. Somebody is going from hopeless to hopeful. And I'm, I'm here to tell you, I promise you, I know exactly what it feels like to be hopeless. I have been there before. I have been in that place. But today you are going from hopeless to hopeful. You want to hope in God because he will lead you. Psalm 32, 8. Looks like I'm reading all of the verses to you all, but that's all right. Um, Psalm 32, 8 says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Why should I put my hope in God? Because your path grows brighter and brighter each day right now. It may look dark right now. It may look gloomy right now. It may look like I just can't see the light at the end of this tunnel. But putting your hope in God because your path grows brighter each and every day. Proverbs 4.18 says, But the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn, which shines brighter and brighter until full day. It might seem dark right now but only for a little while, all right? God has promised you a bright future. Somebody type in a comment, my future is bright. My future is bright. Doesn't matter what it looks like right now, but my future is bright. 
Next, why should I put my hope in God? Because you are his workmanship. Good morning, Portia, because you are his workmanship. Ephesians 2.10 says, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. That was Ephesians 2.10. Yes, my future is bright. All right, you can hope in God because you are his workmanship. Um, last but not least, why, Keisha, why, should, why are you telling me I should put my hope in God? Because all things work together for good. Somebody say all things, not some things, all things. All things, all things, that situation that you're in right now, all things. Somebody, I can't stress it enough, all things work together for good. Romans 8, 28 and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. And let me just say this, this verse one day, um, a few years ago, I read, I was in a situation and I was just complaining and I opened my Bible and this was the verse that my that I, that I literally, when I opened up the Bible and I read that and it made me, it helped me to see in that moment that me complaining about that situation was like a slap in the face to God. I know I shared this before, but whenever I read this verse, I can never read it without sharing it. It was like a slap in the face to God because here he is again telling me his word. I work all things together for your good. And you are just sitting there grumbling and complaining about the situation that you're in. And I had to repent. Because if he's telling me that he works all things, who am I to complain about this situation? It's so horrible. I can't believe this is happening to me. I mean, I had a whole complaining fest, just, just complaining. And it's like, who am I to judge this situation and say it's horrible and it's just awful and God, I can't believe this is happening to me. He works all things. And then that's when we did a, a, a 21 day no complaining fast. So it might have been two years ago. We did a 21 day no complaining fast because a few days before that, that's when the Lord kind of convicted me as far as complaining. So just know that situation that you're in, you can put your hope in God because he works all things. Somebody say all things. It doesn't say some things. It doesn't say the things that make us feel good. All things, you know, he works all things together for our good. And our hope for the future or whatever this, you know, it, it's not based on us, right? Our hope for the future. Uh, too fast. Am I talking too fast? I'm probably, I probably am. <laughs> so our, our, um, our hope for the future is not based on us, but it's based on God and the things that he has promised us. What has he promised us? I just gave y'all, I think about eight or nine or 10 maybe, didn't count. And so this was someone for someone today. Um, I don't know who it was for. Listen, it might even be for me. Just a beautiful reminder um, from his word that you can put your hope in him. All right, your future is bright. That situation is going to get better. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Okay, it was 10. There is light at the end of the tunnel. So if that was for you, go ahead and type in the comments. I have gone from hopeful to hopeless. As a matter of fact, um, from hopeless to hopeful. I hope I said that right every time. Did I say that right? Looks, I need to make sure I'm speaking life over y'all. We are going from hopeless to hopeful. And that'll be our declaration for today because I didn't write any declarations. Go ahead and type in the comments. I declare that I have gone from hopeless to hopeful. Hashtag waking early for his glory. And if that is not for you, then you can type another, um, you can type another, um, will I, will I share what with you? Uh, no, uh, um, I don't know. I'll have to, um, it has a bunch of my notes and stuff in here for me personally. So I'm not sure about that. Let me think about that. Um, I declare that I've gone from hopeless to hopeful. Amen. So that is our declaration for today. I declare. And again, if that is not for you and that's not what you need to declare on today, go ahead and um, pick another scripture verse and um, make, make sure you 
uh, write out a declaration. All right. So that's it. That's all I have. I hope that was for someone. I know that wasn't, you know, based on what we read today, but I felt like someone needed to hear that. Someone needed to be reminded. I am moving from hopeless to hopeful. I love that I'm going from, I declare listen that's right that's right so um i pray that that has blessed you um so don't forget if you came on late um i was reminding you all that i did not forget to send the take-home sheet from the retreat to you all i just did it if i email it it would go to all of you and i really just wanted that to go to those of you that actually attended um, the event but there was no way for me to tell there were so many of you I couldn't remember um, so if you don't mind please go to your email and reply to your confirmation email and then I will send you the take-home sheet believe me you want it so um, there are some of you uh, quite a handful of you that I know um, that attended that I can email it to and I will host another event um, I did not get to respond to all of the messages, all of the emails, and all of the text messages. I can't get in. I can't get in. My heart sank. And for a moment, I just felt my heart sinking. And I said, Keisha, pull it together. It is okay. God knew there was a cap at 100. He knew. You didn't need to know. God knew. And so I had to say, just keep on going. Um, and so with that being said, for the next one, when you register, please just be in the waiting room early um, because I think it was like 936 and we were already at capacity. I didn't know it, but God knew it. And so a little time, a little way in, I kept thinking, wow, this is strange. We're staying right at 100, not thinking it's because it was a cap. I said, you know, not 101, 102, 103, 108, literally 100 the whole time. And not realizing that there was a cap at 100. And so I'm, I was so glad you all hung on for those three hours. For those of you that was were there, it didn't even feel like three hours. It went by so fast. It was just beautiful. God was there from the worship, the teaching, the workout, and that was like no other workout. We don't we didn't, we don't work out like everyone else works out. We invite Jesus, you know, in and it was just amazing. It was amazing. God is amazing. And when I tell you all, I prepared for y'all, prayed for y'all. Got 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 dressed and put on my lipstick for y'all. <laughs> just I just wanted you all to have a great experience. Um yeah, and so that meant a lot to me. I'm so I was so thankful to be able to do that for y'all. So I'll be hosting another one. Um, there were 200, and let me tell you how God is. Let me let me just say this, and I'll let you all go. Um, it was like the early afternoon, the day before I heard 100, right? And um, and I said, you know, God, what is that? What does that mean? He said there will be 100 women, right? And I thought, oh, okay, that's a lot of women. <laughs> and he kept saying 100, 100, 100. And so I saw the registrations coming through. And, you know, a lot of times when people register, um, I'm sorry, hold the line. When people register for something, especially if it's free, usually only have show up, right? So I, saw, I just was watching the registrations, watching the registrations. And, like, when I woke up that morning, it was at 201. Not 200, but 201. And then it stopped. That was it. It was at 201. And I said, okay, God, you said it was going to be 100. So if we cut this number in half, that's 100. And so, um, you know, when we came on the Zoom, I told you all, I said, we'll start as soon as we hit 100 because God told me 100. And I knew that I could not start until we hit 100. And at that time, it was 12 of you that were on. And I'm like, God, I know you said 100. So where's the other 80? What is it? 88, if I got my math right. And it went from 12 to 100 in like a few minutes. And I said, okay, we can start now. And um, so, yeah, that was all, all God. And I just, you know, anyway, all that to say. Even from the amount of women that registered, those who got on, it was just, God was just all, all in it. Just all in it. Why did I share that? I don't know. Maybe someone needed to hear that. But um, maybe next time it can be recorded. Actually, 
I thought about that, prayed about that, even called a friend of mine and said, should I record this? But I will not record it. I don't think I'll ever record them unless God says so. Because um, what he told me is that they will be an experience, right? And it, not an experience that you'll be able to experience watching a three hour recording. And so it's one of those things where if you register, you need to show up. And if you do register, you want to show up on time, right? To make sure um, that you don't have a problem getting in. Um, but I, I just, I don't think it's something that I will record. It will be an experience for those that are there in the room. And that's just what I feel led to do. Um, but what I do know is that I will host them um, consistently for now, maybe quarterly. And um, so that's kind of what he said. And so that was why. Um, and then, you know, I think, you know, when I let you all know in the beginning that it was not being recorded, that kind of, um, you know, allows people to kind of just let down their hair and relax, especially when it comes to sharing, you know, especially with the worship, the workouts and stuff. You know, I just like the idea of it not being recorded, you know, and for it to be, yes, keeping it live and for you all to show up live. And then a lot of times, too, if people know things are being recorded, they're like, oh, I won't show up. I can watch the recording. It's like, mm -mm, you have to show up and experience it. So that's just what he said. And if he changes that, then um, he changes that. Um, so go ahead and begin sharing y'all's takeaways in the comments. I forgot to ask you all to do that. So um, go ahead and begin. And y'all probably could have been doing that while I was talking. I didn't even think of that. So um, go ahead and share your takeaway. What is one thing that stood out to you or something that you will do differently because of um, what you heard? And am I frozen? Because I don't see any comments right now. God touched you during the workout and I loved it because for those of you that did not work out or weren't able to, you were still able to worship and listen to the word, you know, being spoken over you. So it was just a beautiful experience. Um, and it was really supposed to just be for the ladies in the faith and wellness community. And God told me to open it up um, to everyone. God is my anchor. I can trust him. Hey, Kimberly, you're on. I didn't see you. Mm -hmm. So, yes, y'all go ahead and start sharing y'all's takeaways. And then I probably need to go in like three minutes. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. All right, it looks like you all might be done. You take away all things are working for my good. That's right, Rose. It was so nice talking to you yesterday, Rose. That was so fun. I love when I get to talk to y'all on the phone. <laughs> oh, I hope you didn't mind me telling her, telling everybody we spoke yesterday, but I'm sure it's okay. The meditation, yes. It's such a beautiful experience. And I think when people hear the word meditation, again, like I shared on the retreat, because I was kind of, um, I, yeah, I was a little nervous about kind of sharing that and, and, and sharing that portion at the retreat. But I need everyone to know, and, and, and no, I need to take that back because I will no longer be nervous about that because that's one of those things that we needed to take back from the enemy. It's one of the things that he stole from us, right? That's what he does. He's a thief and he takes everything and perverts it. And so now when people hear the word meditation, they think new age meditation. Ooh, what's that? What are they doing over there? You know, and um, so it was nice to be able to take that back and, um, and, and keep it, make it what it is, you know, us just meditating on the word, meditating on God, meditating on his goodness. Um, and, you know, the enemy s snatched it and did whatever he wanted to do with it. But we, people of God, taking it back. Amen. And so, yes, love you too, Rose. <laughs> All right, y'all, I have to get ready to go and um, get my um, computer and stuff set up. I've never experienced meditation like that before. God allowed me to think about the words I've been speaking. Amen. It was just a great experience. And like I said, 
I said, God, I wanna, I, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna do this as if these, not these people, but you know what I mean, as if y'all paid a thousand dollars to enter this event. <laughs> oh. And so, like I said, during the event, they are free and they will always be free. That is just, and, and what I'm so thankful for is that is a way to be able to give back and to like serve, you know what I mean? And so for now, not for now, but what I'm hearing God say for now is that they are free. They will always be free. Now, who knows if these are, this is something that gets pulled offline when the world opens back up and we have to rent some great big auditorium, then that's something different. But um, it's just, you know, a way to give back and a way to serve. So, yeah. And I had fun doing it. I was really tired after. I think the amount of the praying and just mentally just preparing. I was just like, why am I so tired? <laughs> I was tired. <laughs> I was so tired. Yeah. So the next one will um, kind of look the same for those that couldn't make it. Um, and then it'll be something different each time going forward. All right, I have to go. Um, hopefully I'm not working out by myself this morning. I, I, I wish I could say I took a nap, but I had to kind of run and be mommy. It was AJ's birthday. It was just a long weekend. So today I'm taking a nap today I'm taking a nap and then um, I had class last night two classes um, for the ladies in my faith and fitness camp so it was just from Friday Saturday Sunday and Monday just a really really long long day so today I'm taking a nap <laughs> taking a nap or at least I can say I hope I am I think I did I take all my stuff I know I gotta do all my stuff I don't think I did all my stuff <laughs> Naps are good. I have to put on one of those masks though because I can't, I won't be able to fall asleep um, if um, if it's light out. <laughs> I'll check, Alicia. I'll check. But I know that day it was it was a hundred. I don't know. I I have to check. I didn't know it was was there. All right. Now I'm done with all my stuff. <laughs> Alright, let me go and um and get dressed. Well, not really get dressed. I am dressed. Um if you go to go to the the uh, I'll I'll met please message me, Dolores. Message me. Message me. Um and then I'll I'll share the link that has information. Alright, I really have to go because now I'm pushing it. I have to be ready by 5.45, so I love y'all, and I'll see y'all tomorrow.